Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. When you first meet her, you've got no sense that you're talking to someone that's extraordinary. And one of the reasons is that she doesn't self-promote. She has no sense of actually how fantastic she is. Please keep watching for more about super athlete and philanthropist Fiona Oakes. Supreme Master Ching Hai, with tears of love and awe, gratefully present the Shining World Compassion Award to Miss Fiona Oakes with heartfelt praises and sincere respect for all that you do for our precious animal friends and the planet, plus a gift of 21,000 US dollars as a humble token of support for your noble work. May you have continued success in your heartfelt, touching and inspiring endeavors, and may the Providence bless you and your loved ones forevermore. You are a saint. Greetings, luminous viewers. Sabahul Khair means good morning in Jordanian Arabic. I am Nadine. The optimistic people in Jordan send you their love. May you be forever blessed. Welcome to the first episode of our show entitled Running for Good, Queen of the Extreme, Fiona Ox, Vegan. Today, it is our privilege to feature one of the top ultra endurance athletes on the planet. Fiona Ox from Essex, England, UK. Fiona is one of the greatest athletes in the world, judging by her records. She is the Guinness World Record holder for the fastest female in cumulative time to complete a marathon within the Antarctic Circle as well as on the other six continents at 23 hours, 27 minutes and 40 seconds. She also holds the Guinness World Records for the fastest female to complete a marathon on each of the seven continents plus the North Pole in both aggregate time 28 hours, 20 minutes and 50 seconds and elapsed time 225 days and 18 hours. Fiona has been dubbed the Queen of the Extreme by her peers due to her grit in some of the most challenging races in the world. An example is the Marathon de Sable or MDS, a six-day, 250-kilometer or 156-mile ultra-marathon, often described as the toughest foot race in the world. She finished the race despite suffering two broken toes in an accident just two days before the race. In the 2018 feature-length film about Fiona by renowned filmmaker and Shining World Compassion Award laureate Keegan Kuhn called Running for Good, the Fiona Ox documentary, UK MDS organizer Steve Diderick commented about Fiona as an athlete and person. 
When you first meet her, you've got no sense that you're talking to someone that's extraordinary. And one of the reasons is that she doesn't self-promote. She has no sense of actually how fantastic she is. In 2013, at the age of 43, Fiona took on the brutal North Pole Marathon, a 42.195 kilometer or 26.2 mile foot race on the polar ice cap, waist deep snow with the wind chills making temperatures as low as minus 100 degrees Celsius or minus 148 degrees Fahrenheit. This competition is known to cause serious hyperthermia and frostbite to participants. Despite stumbling early in the race and twisting her hand badly, she broke the course record for women by an amazing 45 minutes, coming in only behind two of the 35 male competitors. Fiona is a legend. She ended up winning the North Pole Marathon very, very easily. In the same year, in 2013, Fiona won second place in the treacherous Volcano Marathon in Chile. Despite stumbling and twisting her knee badly, 28 kilometers or 17 miles into the race. The Atacama Volcano Marathon is extreme in a very different way to the ice marathons. It's one of the highest marathons in the world, so you start at 14,500 feet and you've only got 11% oxygen, so about half what you'd have at, at sea level. Running at altitude, I think especially for someone who comes from sea level, is uh, definitely a challenge. It is very, very extreme. I think more extreme and potentially more risky than the ice marathons. Approximately 28 kilometers or 17 miles into the race, Fiona stumbled and twisted her knee badly and had a difficult decision to make, pull out or stay in. She recounted the painful experience. You are battling very, very bad terrain, about 28K. I rolled my knee on a stone or whatever it was, I don't know. I just rolled my knee and slipped. I knew I'd damaged it badly the minute I did it. I just thought, OK, I'm going to have to walk. I'm going to have to do what I've got to do to finish. It's not going to be pretty, and it really wasn't. If I'd have just been trying to do this for myself, I wouldn't have put myself through it, I have to say that. But I wasn't doing it for myself, so I did. Fiona was rushed to the hospital by ambulance after the race. Inconceivably, just five days later, Fiona ran in the formidable Antarctic Ice Marathon and took first place in four hours, 20 minutes, and two seconds. What makes Fiona's athletic performance the very stuff of miracles is that she has a physical impediment that doctors said would preclude her from participation in any type of impact sport. This disability occurred when, as a teenager, a malignant growth in her right knee led to 17 radical surgeries over the course of five years, culminating in the removal of her entire right kneecap. At the age of 14, she was told that she would never properly walk, let alone run. To this day, Fiona has to be ultra careful with her knee, as it dislocates easily. She also endures constant knee pain while running, which worsens towards the later stages of a race. As Fiona mentioned, she does not run for herself. Why then does she run? We will find out after a brief constructive message. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back, erudite viewers. As we have seen, Fiona has overcome improbable odds to become a world-class athlete. Her achievements are made even more astounding by the fact that her life is almost entirely dedicated to a cause of a different nature. She is the primary caregiver for hundreds of rescue animals at a sanctuary that she founded in 1996, named Tower Hill Stables Sanctuary in Essex, England.
Today, there are over 600 animals under her direct care. Her typical day at the sanctuary begins at 3.30 a.m. and is non-stop work with about two hours of sports training between tasks. She only settles down to her sole meal of the day at about 8 p.m. What motivates Fiona to push herself to such an extent? I didn't take to running because I wanted to run. I wanted to promote veganism and the benefits of plant-based diets. I realized that, you know, I can, I can rescue animals and I can deliver um, harmonic existence to those in my care. But for the billions out there that are suffering, I can't touch. How do I do that? And that was when I formulated the idea of going out and running. The reason was I wanted a platform to speak out. At the time, I'm very limited and constrained by the sanctuary. It's in the middle of nowhere, so you know, it's not a social hub. There was no social media at the time. The only thing that I was fairly good at was sport, but not running. Uh, but the only attention in sport for women was Paula Radcliffe, who was running the marathon. And I, it, was, it had all kind of hashtags, if you like. You know, this is the toughest event in the athletics calendar, and you know, if you can complete a marathon, you can do anything. So I thought, okay, even though I've got this bad knee, if I can just compete in one and hopefully complete in it, it shows that you can do anything. It's grown from there. When I started to win races, I thought, you know, but this is a, a massive advertising opportunity for what I believe in, for veganism. Fiona's intuition was spot on, as her vegan advocacy has been highly successful. She explains how it all started for her. I've gone vegetarian at three, simple rejection of meat. I love animals, I know where animal flesh comes from, I don't want to harm my friends. After that, I started to ask my mum questions, who was able to articulate in a more adult way what I was going through, you know. And um, I was like, interesting, like, where do eggs come from? Why do we take these products? What, what about leather? That's the skin of an animal. The animals are my friends. So it was when I was about six years old, probably a little bit before, that um, I just decided I wanted to reject those products from my life. And I was very fortunate in that I had a mum that was very accepting of it. Today, at the age of 51, Fiona's running career remains in full swing. It is safe to say that she has proven what she had set out to prove, that a lifelong plant-based diet can sustain the highest levels of sports performance and physical health. And I'm the living proof of it. You know, I've been running now for 20 years. I've got such versatility and I'm still doing it. Believe and understand that you, you won't be denying yourself anything. You will be liberating yourself and enhancing your performance if it's done correctly. We thank you, Fiona, for giving of yourself so selflessly to demonstrate that we can stop the unnecessary torture and killing of trillions of innocent sentient beings every year simply by adopting a benevolent vegan lifestyle and in doing so improve our own health and the health of our only planet home. Supreme Master Ching Hai with tears of love and awe, gratefully present the Shining World Compassion Award to Miss Fiona Oakes with heartfelt praises and sincere respect for all that you do for our precious animal friends and the planet, plus a gift of 21,000 US dollars as a humble token of support for your noble work. May you have continued success in your heartfelt, touching and inspiring endeavors, and may the Providence bless you and your loved ones forevermore. You are a saint. Welcome to the second episode of Running for Good, Queen of the Extreme, Fiona Ox, vegan.
Today, we will continue our tribute to British endurance runner Fiona Oaks for her extraordinary accomplishments as an athlete and an animal rights advocate. For over two decades, Fiona has devoted her life to rescuing animals and promoting the benevolent vegan lifestyle. She cares for over 600 rescue animals at her animal sanctuary, Tower Hill Stable Sanctuary in Essex, England. Despite the 15-hour workdays and exhausting labor the sanctuary entails, she still finds the time and energy to maintain a strenuous regimen of training runs needed to compete on the world stage. It's all done for the animals. My running I do to promote veganism. The sanctuary I do to nurture animals. Um, and I've been vegan since I was six years old. A completely self-inspired decision. My parents weren't at that time. So my whole life has been pretty much dedicated to helping animals in some shape or form. Fiona has over 50 marathons under her belt in her 20 years of running with a personal best time of 2 hours 38 minutes. One of her most remarkable feats was completing 7 marathons in seven consecutive days in October and November 2014, finishing with a win in England's Stevenage Marathon. Some other notable achievements include first place in the Halstead Marathon in UK, setting a course record in 2007 at 2 hours 58 minutes 22 seconds. First place in Finland's Ruska Marathon in 2007, setting a course record at 2 hours 58 minutes. First place in Finland's Santa Claus Marathon in 2010, setting a course record at 3 hours 3 minutes 33 seconds. First place in the UK's Dartmoor Vale Marathon in 2011, setting a course record at 3 hours 1 minute 44 seconds. First place in UK's Great North Run Half Marathon in 2011. First place in British Isles Isle of Man Marathon in 2013. Fifth place in Italy's Florence Marathon in 2004. Eighth place in the Amsterdam Marathon in 2005. Tenth place in the Moscow Marathon. As we mentioned in our previous episode, Fiona does not run for herself, but for the animals. We asked her how her work for the animals began. So um, it was formally started in, in 1996. Um, previous to that, I'd been rescuing animals when and where I could. I'd got a rented accommodation and I got like chickens and smaller animals there. And I got horses at farms. I didn't start a sanctuary, I started a place of refuge and safety for the ones that were already in my care and it's grown and grown and grown since then. Fiona shares about her connection with the animals. I've got about 600 animals, we've got 106 horses, 150 pigs, 100 sheep, uh, 50 cows, uh, various dogs and cats and chickens and turkeys and geese and peacocks and swans all residing at the sanctuary um, and there's so much you can learn from animals. Uh, animals are a great leveller and a great teacher if you can listen to the message. They aren't our inferiors, they're our equals but equal in other ways. If we learn to listen to them and you know interact with them we can see how clever compassionate they are um, so yeah it's a, it's a big project um, that's why I need to get up at 3.30 uh, in the morning to care for them uh, but it's my great passion in life caring for those if you are touched by Fiona's sensitivity and empathy for the animals you are not alone 
Andre Baptista is a veterinarian for Tower Hill Stable Sanctuary and appeared in Running for Good, the Fiona Oaks documentary by award-winning film director Keegan Kuhn that was released in 2018. Regarding Fiona, he stated, She just loves taking care of the animals. She knows them all by heart and she knows their personalities, everything. Yeah, it's incredible. And she's such a kind person that she doesn't say no <laughs> to any animal in danger. Bright viewers, let us take a moment to acknowledge the miracles of life that are all around us in myriads of forms. We will be back momentarily. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to our show. As we have seen, Fiona Oaks is one super lady. We wondered what a normal day in Fiona's life is like. Obviously, it's hard to say what a normal day is because there's always something abnormal going on. So you might always have a sick resident or you've got to get a vet in. Basic structure of it is to always make sure that the animals are cared for, their needs are met. That's the most important. That's why I start so early in the morning. With regard to the running, I run nine times a week, about 100 miles a week. That's really, really tough to fit in at the level I am doing. Thankfully, Fiona has help from some family members and a few volunteers. Two pillars of strength in her life are her mother, Meg, and her life partner, Martin. In the 1990s, when Fiona realized that she could no longer safely care for so many animals on rental properties, her mother sold her engagement ring and piano, among other things, to help raise funds for sanctuary land. Martin's earnings from his asset management job in London and fundraising efforts through the years have also been crucial. Martin also helps care for the animals while Fiona is away for races and speaking engagements. To this day, Martin marvels at how Fiona juggles everything she must accomplish daily. There's stuff that needs to be done all the time. You know, animals to see to, there's medications to attend to, there's maintenance to do, there's a list of jobs as long as your arm. The thought of having to do all that work and then go out and run 20 miles. <laughs> right, it's not even just like, oh, I'm just gonna do a nice little country jog. It's appalling speed work to have to fit in or an appalling 20 mile road run and then come back. And as soon as you get back, to have to then start the evening jogs, which is like bringing all the horses in, getting the buckets ready. I just, no. Even though, you know, we've, we've lived together 24 years, I have no idea how anybody can fit all that in. Amazingly, for years, Fiona was also a retained firefighter, a firefighter who is on call 24 seven to leap into action at a moment's notice for firefighting duties and emergency rescues. It meant that she had to go without sleep sometimes when her body needed it most, but she says it was something that she adjusted to. To her, it's the financial challenge of feeding so many mouths that is the most draining. It's a constant fundraising battle. My running does raise some funds. Um, it, it, it's really, really hard. We do have volunteers that go out there and try and help, but I think that the, the physical work is exhausting. The worry about how you're gonna keep your family fed is even more tiring. Our last feed bill for one month was 17,080 pounds. It is huge, it's a huge ask. We are owed by Fiona's dedication and genuine love for the animals. Like many animal lovers, she dreams of a day when the senseless cruelty worldwide against billions of animals year in and year out will stop. Fiona is also concerned about the disproportionately high environmental cost of animal-based food relative to plant-based food. In a recent Facebook posting on January 7, 2020, she wrote, As Australia is consumed by fire, I quote Joseph Poor of Oxford University, 
A vegan diet is probably the single biggest way to reduce your impact on planet Earth. Not just greenhouse gases, but global acidification, eutrophication, land use and water use is far bigger than cutting down on your flights or buying an electric car. The fully enlightened master, Supreme Master Ching Hai, has pointed out the astonishing impact a plant-based lifestyle would have on the planet Earth. If we eliminate meat from our diet, global warming is reduced very quickly by a tremendous amount, if not the most of it. If everyone becomes vegan, stops raising more animals for food, and instead growing organic vegetables, our earth and the environment can be saved, and as quick as we could not even imagine, in a few weeks. For two decades, Fiona has provided a loving home for hundreds of mistreated and neglected animals at her animal sanctuary in Essex, UK, called Tower Hill Stable Sanctuary. On top of working the equivalent of two full-time jobs at the sanctuary, Fiona has built an elite running career in the last 20 years with the sole purpose of raising public awareness about the benefits of the vegan diet. And did we mention that she did it all on one kneecap? Indeed, it is a constant source of wonder to orthopedic surgeons how Fiona has been able to compete in marathons despite having lost a kneecap to surgery as a teenager. To this day, some medical experts doubt whether she is really missing a kneecap until they look at the x-rays. Most puzzling to them is how she manages to negotiate the steep ascents and descents in multi-stage ultramarathons, carrying self-sufficiency backpacks weighing as heavy as 11 kilograms or 24 pounds, a renowned orthopedic surgeon in Utah, USA, Dr. Thomas Rosenberg commented on the issue in Running for Good, a feature-length film about Fiona tackling the toughest foot race in the world, the Marathon de Sabs, in 2017. We always caution the patients if they if they don't have a kneecap, you can't backpack downhill with uh, heavy packs, even medium weight packs. But when you start climbing, and especially as you start descending, that's where that kneecap comes into activity. As a physical therapist, I mean, it's it's pretty amazing when I see individuals competing that push the limits of endurance and strength without certain body parts, and then. Fiona's case, here she is, you know, running without a kneecap. It is kind of mystifying, like, how does that happen? But Fiona's found a way to adapt and move her body and challenge it, not just get through daily life and taking care of animals on her sanctuary, but then meeting the demands of an ultramarathon, meeting the demands of a multi-day event. In 2018, Fiona took on one of the most formidable ultra-endurance races in the world, the Atacama Crossing in Chile. It is a six-stage, 250-kilometer or 155-mile ultramarathon in the highest and driest desert on the planet. Fiona spoke about this race in an interview with plantbasednews.org. This race has everything freezing cold night conditions, high altitude running, extremely hot conditions in the day, lots and lots of river crossings, long distances, week-long self-sufficiency, exceedingly rough terrain, many climbs and, more worrying in my case, many descents. Fiona won first place in her age group as well as stage six of the race. While knee pain is a constant companion for Fiona during her runs, 
She says that she does not mind because the benefits outweigh the discomfort. For her, it is also a matter of mind over matter. Now there's arguments about statistics. Is a vegan diet better, is it not? I just wanted to create a fact that can't be argued with. Whether, whatever you like, I am vegan. I have been vegan since I was six years old. I continue to win races. I've just qualified to run for England in the half marathon, even though people think I'm an ultra runner. Um, I have done this. I have won a race outright. I've beaten all the men. You can't argue with that fact. I can do it on a vegan diet. There is no excuse in terms of it being prohibitive to sporting excellence, even though I don't consider myself particularly as a sports person or a runner. I can do it because it's come from a mind. It's come from a belief. And I think that's what I would like to inspire people. You don't have to be inspired by running. You're inspiring them as a belief that you can do whatever you set out to do. And I think that the most potent message is, it's come from within. It's come from my soul. Everything I do comes from my soul. Cherished viewers, let us take a few moments to contemplate our deep gratitude for the miracle of life. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Warning, you might find the content here disturbing, but the truth must be revealed. Welcome back to our show. As we have seen, one would be hard-pressed to find another super athlete with as much grit as Fiona Oaks and an equal amount of heart to match. These are qualities that have served her well in her advocacy for the animals. Her social media pages are filled with postings from people who were inspired by her to switch to a vegan lifestyle while Fiona takes a non-confrontational approach in her animal rights activism, she would otherwise stop at nothing to promulgate the vegan ideal. One of her success stories is the Vegan Runners Club, which she co-founded in 2004. Members of the club proudly run with the words vegan runners emblazoned across their vests in races. Fiona explains the inspiration behind Vegan Runners. In 2004, I co-founded Vegan Runners because it's actually just free advertising for this word, which people were not familiar with in 2004. 16 years ago, people did not recognize what veganism was about at all. They just didn't know. So I'm running 45 minutes ahead of the main field, alone through the streets of London, with basically a billboard on my front and back. And people were saying, vegan, oh, go on the vegan lady. Fiona's powerful example has seen Vegan Runners membership increase exponentially in the last three years to almost 17,000 as of November 2019, making it one of the largest running clubs in the UK with more than 40 local groups across the country and chapters across the globe. In 2018, Fiona claimed her fourth Guinness World Record by becoming the fastest female to run a half marathon in an animal costume dressed as a cow in Tromsø, Norway at 1 hour 32 minutes 24 seconds. Fiona says that her cow suit has been a great icebreaker to start a conversation with people. Why do I run some races dressed as a cow? A question very often asked, and the answer is simple. People ask that question, which allows me to introduce them to the horrors of the dairy industry. One which is very often overlooked and even endorsed, especially in the sporting environment. People often think dairy is healthy, and this is a myth perpetuated by suppliers, health professionals, educational and governmental bodies, and coaches and trainers alike. This idea is so deep-rooted and ingrained, it can be a hard one to break down. But it is one I have had a great success in doing by wearing my cow costume and running well in it. Speaking of icebreakers, 
a special mention must be made of Percy Bear, a larger-than-life mascot that has accompanied Fiona through thick and thin. This is my very best friend in the whole world. Um, he's called Percy Bear and he's been everywhere with me. When they made the film Running For Good About Me, Keegan said, oh, I think it's really, really good that you have this little, um, little kind of mascot with you that you know, relates to children and it's really, very really clever. And he says, no, he's just my best friend, Keegan. <laughs> he's a real little personality, but he's, yeah, he's a very, very cheeky little chap. And he loves sweets. <laughs> While Fiona is a firm believer that actions speak louder than words, she is a highly sought-after public speaker, appearing regularly at vegfests and special events around the world, as well as on podcasts and national TV shows. Fiona is also exceptionally active on social media, even if she has had to forfeit her own social life almost entirely. In addition, Fiona works with other nonprofits to promote ethical and sustainable vegan living. She is an ambassador for the Vegan Society, patron of the Captive Animals Protection Society, patron of Freedom for Animals, co-founder of VITA, an animal rights group in Russia, and spokesperson and patron of Omskye Kivostiki, a dog shelter in Siberia. In May 2017, Fiona flew to the USA at her own expense to throw her support behind teenage animal rights activist Leela Copeland's campaign for a fully vegan meal option in her school district that serves Los Angeles County in California. Fiona addressed a large panel of officials at the headquarters of the school district alongside other vegan advocators. In a groundbreaking decision, the school board voted unanimously to roll out a pilot program in some schools. Eventually, the board could make the vegan lunch option mandatory for all the 1,100 schools in the district, potentially benefiting upwards of 700,000 students. We thank you, Fiona, for dedicating your life to providing such heartfelt testimony for veganism, namely, that we have nothing to lose by putting an end to the torture and killing of billions of our innocent animal friends every year and everything to gain in personal, environmental and planetary health. May the heavens bless you and yours abundantly, now and forever. Welcome to the fourth episode of Running for Good, Queen of the Extreme, Fiona Oates. In the previous episodes, we had the privilege of showcasing the extraordinary accomplishments and saintly sacrifices of 51-year-old British endurance runner Fiona Oakes in the last two decades. She cares for over 600 rescue animals at her sanctuary and pushes herself to the brink as an endurance runner despite a physical disability just so that she can showcase the superiority of the plant-based diet. true voice for the animals. She also speaks up against social injustice and environmental degradation. With over 10 marathon wins and three world records under her belt, Fiona's next major target is successfully completing the Four Deserts Grand Slam, widely considered the toughest foot race series in the world. Within a calendar year, one must finish four of the world's most challenging week-long 155 mile or 250 kilometer ultramarathons in some of the world's most unforgiving terrain, carrying one's own food and supplies, a feat that only a small number of people have ever accomplished. 
Fiona has never had a coach and had to learn through trial and error how to train to push her limits without injuring her unstable right knee. Remarkably, while she has had injuries from accidents and falls, she has never had a running injury, that is, an injury from the rigors of running. When she does have an accidental injury, she can bounce back in a very short time. She also recovers quickly from her strenuous workouts and sanctuary work with minimal rest. Fiona credits her lifelong vegan diet for her strength and resiliency. I recover very fast. Um, I um, am able to train nine times a week. I'm still like um, elite start in the London Marathon. I win races when I go to them. And I've won the variety of my performances is amazing. Everything from 5K up to a, a seven day ultra stage marathon. I've got the wins at, at altitude in the heat of the desert, uh, in extreme cold of the North Pole, and fast road races, I've got a PB of 238. It's obviously not been detrimental to my performance, that's what it's all about. Fiona is not the only super athlete to endorse the plant-based diet. Seven-time US Western States 100-mile ultramarathon winner, Scott Jurek, a vegan since 1999, discussed food and training in the Running For Good documentary. So many people have it in their mind. I mean, I had it too, this idea that you need to have meat, you need to have animal protein to be able to push harder and faster. But I really think of what I'm putting into my body is fuel that's gonna fuel my workouts, but also fuel recovery. And I think that's probably the biggest benefit of a plant-based diet is that ability to fuel it with the best fuel possible, but then it's also the fuel that's going to help recovery, that's going to allow my muscles to heal, to allow my body to be ready for the next workout or to be ready for the next race. Fiona is often asked the question, what do you eat? One might expect her diet to be meticulously planned to ensure the highest level of athletic performance, but in fact, she eats only one simple, whole food, plant-based meal a day. In a podcast interview with the award-winning content creator, Sarah Williams, she talked about her diet. Very seasonal. I eat seasonal vegetables, which my father mainly grows. Um, nuts, uh, pulses, rice. Um, my mum does a lot of cooking, which I'm very fortunate. Even when I go off to the right, I don't have recovery drinks. In another interview with Sky News UK in 2018, she said that any supplementation to her diet comes from fortified food. I take no supplements, but I do take fortified foods. I'm a bit addicted to Vegemite, low salt, that's got B12 in it. There is this B12 argument. A lot of foods are fortified with B12, such as breakfast cereals yeah. and soya drinks, but I take no medications whatsoever. Radiant viewers, let us take a few moments to reflect and marvel at the body's ability to heal itself. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back. As we have seen throughout this series, Fiona's compassion for people and animals knows no bounds. She shared with us why she continues to burn the candle at both ends for others. One day it will be my last day that I see, and all I'm doing is trying to maximise my time on this earth in order to good for others, so that when my last day does come, I know that I've done all that I can. And that's what I would encourage other people to do. Compassion towards people and animals have always come naturally to Fiona, even as a little girl. However, she says that the extreme conditions of the week-long ultramarathons, where one carries their own supplies, have also taught her important lessons about empathy. I find the ultra-stage races do give me something more than physical endurance. 
They bring mental enhancement. I always tell people when I speak of veganism that we are all animals, whether human or non-human, and we need the same things when it comes to what is important. Food, water, shelter, freedom, no fear, and our health. Marathon de Saab teaches you this in abundance if you are a willing student. Hence, Fiona yearns for a world in which no one has to suffer from a lack of bare necessities. I remember back in 1984, a lot of the younger viewers won't remember this, but older ones will, there was a concert, Live Aid concert, Bob Geldof brought these Live Aid concerts to raise the awareness of the plight of people in Africa, starving in Ethiopia. And until that point, I don't think we'd ever seen such images, graphic images presented to us. That was the time that we should have looked at ourselves in the first world and thought we need to make change. What kind of change? Fiona believes that a world without suffering entails true veganism, which for her means living in love and gratitude, coinciding with the basic tenet of all major religions. For me, plant-based living is okay, but it's not enough. It's not like veganism. Veganism is actually embracing the ethic behind why we are doing things. For us in the West, it's not right to think that it's not, we can carry on with the same model of greed and consumerism at the same rate, so long as it's got a plant-based or vegan sticker on it. We have to change the model in the way that we think. And to do that, we have to learn for the others to have more, for the bit of a more fair distribution of resources along the planet, we have to accept and expect to have less and embrace that idea and rather than look at the things that we aren't, aren't having, look at the blessings we have all around us. To Fiona, veganism is also the key to turning around our current precipitous trajectory towards climate catastrophe. She said in an interview with TheVeganReview.com I have always said the model from which we conduct our daily lives has to change in order that our species can survive and thrive. Adopting veganism as the globally recognised dietary choice is not the only solution, but it is the most viable, easiest and most effective one to implement and gives us time to work on other issues such as fossil fuels, industry and our ethical approach to every aspect of our lives as well as the lives of each other, both non-human and human alike. That very message was espoused by Supreme Master Ching Hai in a climate change conference held in Mexico on June 4, 2009. One of the most effective and fastest way to reduce the heat in the atmosphere is to eliminate methane production. Methane not only traps up to 72 times more heat than carbon, it also goes away from the atmosphere much faster than CO2. So if we stop producing methane, the atmosphere will cool more quickly than if we stop producing carbon dioxide. So to cool the planet most quickly, we have to stop consuming meat in order to stop the livestock raising industry and thus stop greenhouse gases, methane, and other toxic gases from animal industry. We would then have time to actually be able to adopt longer-term measures such as more green technology to also remove the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. In the feature-length documentary by award-winning filmmaker Keegan Conn, Running for Good, Fiona talks about the driving force behind her dedication. I've been very strong, but I am very, very sensitive. I abhor cruelty. 
to humans and animals alike. I don't think that in the 21st century especially, people should be suffering, and I certainly don't think animals should be suffering at people's hands. I can't turn a blind eye, it's not in me to do that. In an interview with fellow vegan activist Victoria Moran, Fiona shared an episode at her sanctuary that brought her both joy and sadness. I remember one day in the summertime, it was very, very hot, and we got a load of bananas and uh, watermelons. So um, I thought, oh, late evening snack for the pigs, I'll take them over the road. And to see these little pigs, there's 121 pigs <laughs> come running over for these bananas and all the fresh fruit. And yes, it's a joy. You see how excited they were and they were making choices. No, I don't want a banana. I want the watermelon. I want this. I want that. And then you remember the ones that don't. You remember the ones that are in farrowing crates. You remember the ones that won't see the light of day ever in their life. They might get a sniff of fresh air when they go into an abattoir. And that's very sad because each life is, is important. So for me, yeah, it, it, there are highs and there are lows. Um, and obviously that's why I started running because, you know, I could take in 450 animals. I could take in 500, 600, but that's, that's nothing. I've got to address the cause, the reason that these animals are needing rescuing. And um, that's always the closest. That from the minute I wake up, to the minute I go to sleep and very often when what I'm thinking of when I'm, I'm dreaming. Despite her impossible schedule, caring for the animals and training for an elite running career, Fiona somehow finds the time to give guidance to aspiring runners on social media. Fiona's kindness has also won the hearts of fellow runners. One of them is ultramarathoner Lynn Huynh, who ran alongside Fiona in the 2013 North Pole Marathon. I came in like six and a half hours later and she hugged me and she just said, I am so proud of you. And I was like, really? Like, you've been laying here for six hours waiting for me to finish. She's like, yeah, but I think you are the toughest. She's so incredibly strong and she kind of denies it in herself, but she's so willing to acknowledge it in others. Honestly, like I've never seen someone so strong and so, so humble. Perhaps there is no bigger Fiona fan than her mother, Meg. Fiona calls her the rock in her life. I look at her in awe, a life into the world that is so compassionate and feeling, loving, that she has to push herself to these tremendous lengths to try to get a platform so that she can speak for those who have no voice. Marvelous viewers, let us pause now to remember the divine within. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to our show. Although Fiona never sought the limelight, she has received many awards and accolades through the years. In 2014, she was named the Vegan Athlete of the Year by GreatVeganAthletes.com. In 2018, she received 70,000 votes to win the Vegan Athlete of the Year award from the UK's Vegan Festival Awards. In the same year, PETA presented her with its first Best Vegan Athlete Award. Also in 2018, the prestigious Amplifon Brave Britain Awards honoured her with the Charity Champion Award for her work at Tower Hill Stables Sanctuary. Fiona has also attracted the attention of a vegan entrepreneur, Will Green, who worked with her to create the Fiona Oaks line of vegan cross-training shoes released in 2017. The shoes are available online at wills-vegan-store.com. 
30% of all proceeds from the shoe sales go toward Tower Hill Stable Sanctuary. In 2019, Fiona was training very hard through the bitter cold winter months for her fourth Marathon de Sabs in April 2020. Unfortunately, the race was cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic has also led to a drop in donation revenues for the Tower Hill Stables Sanctuary, casting a shadow over its future. Fiona holds nothing back when speaking about the zoonotic disease ever since its outbreak. Here are some snippets from a 10-minute gem she posted on Facebook on March 31, 2020. The reality is clear, whether it be SARS, MERS, COVID-19, Nipah, Ebola, swine fever, avian flu, they are all caused by eating animals. Whether those animals be factory farmed, it makes no difference. Since all coronavirus are caused by transferal from non-human to human animals, then surely now is the time to consider adopting a global vegan policy, which would be the most effective way of preventing future incidences. We may develop a vaccine for this particular strain, but what if it mutates or another one comes along, which, given past history, seems more than likely? It may be argued you cannot tell people what to eat, but they are now being told to stay incarcerated in their homes, isolated and feeling helpless and frightened. Shortly, being vegan and ending this type of disaster is a choice they should be made more aware of and allowed to consider as a very real and viable option to protect themselves and each other from this happening again. For me, I always understood prevention was better than any cure. So you do the maths. Global vegan policy is exactly what Supreme Master Ching Hai called for in a series of urgent messages to humanity in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. There are a few ticking bombs, not just one. No need to wait for any, even climate change. A one, one incurable sickness, one strange sickness after another. We cannot run away from our karma, meaning the consequence of our action. As you saw, so shall you reap. The Bible state that. All the main religion of the world states that. And this vegan law is the most effective way to save our world. Indeed, in light of the exhaustive research by World Watch Institute and others pointing to livestock raising as the number one cause of human-induced climate change critically endangering future generations, can we continue to consider meat and dairy consumption a matter of personal choice? In another poignant Facebook message on July 27, 2019, Fiona again does not hold back about it. What is my vegan message? Why have I lived and will die by this ethical stance? The only way the world can change, humanity can be saved and the suffering can cease is if we adopt a whole new way of living, thinking, behaving, speaking, caring and believing. We have to open our hearts and minds to the suffering of others and break down the barriers of speciesism, racism and discrimination we have erected ourselves, generation on generation. We don't have time to waste. We reinvent the model completely or we fry in a furnace fueled by human greed, selfishness and consumerism. True empathy and compassion for all living beings is the only thing which will enable us to save this planet.
in her recent urgent message to world leaders, Supreme Master Jing Hai points to the same solution and lays out a roadmap to a peaceable future. Because you know well, by now, by UN warning, by scientific research report, you know, we know that the meat, fish, eggs, milk, laboratory tests on animal, leather industry, anything to do with hurting animals, domestic or wild, are detrimental to our world. We talk about all kinds of climate reduction or reducing air pollution, but animal racing, fish, egg, milk industry, etc., anything to do with animals, are the worst producers of lethal methane gas, which heats up our planet. So, stopping these brutal, murderous businesses is the fastest way to cool our earth. Do the vegan law, do sign it, do practice it, do follow through, do be vegan. That's the right thing and that's all you have to do. Everything else will fall into place. We are profoundly grateful to Supreme Master Ching Hai for her loving guidance and tireless work to rescue the world. We also sincerely thank Fiona for her deep insights and for being such a beacon of light. To learn more about Fiona Oaks and ways to help with her sanctuary, please visit fionaoaksfoundation.co.uk. Avant-garde viewers, we appreciate your attentive presence for this final episode of our series. Coming up next is The Almighty Part 2 of 4 on Between Master and Disciples right after noteworthy news. May you be utterly fulfilled every moment of your life in heaven's forever grace. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash ve. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com bar oblique ve. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com barra inclinada ve. Women de Jemu Tigon Tojong Yen, Tinkan suprememastertv.com, Sisien schedule, or suprememastertv.com, Sisien ve.